thanks for having me and thank you very much uh, to the Keynes Fund for funding this research. So in a nutshell, what the, the, this project does is that it uh, creates new long run indices of economic uncertainty for the UK. It, it does this by applying natural language processing methods to newspapers for over 150 years. Uh, we create uh, indices both, both on kind of both based on sort of commonly accepted methods now, which is basically relying on word counts, um, counting articles uh, where an uncertainty related word occurs. But we also apply some machine learning methods to kind of create uh, what we believe are better indices. Now we also, uh, once we have these uh, indices, uh, we also look at uh, how uncertainty impacts macro conditions, but we're gonna really focus on how we, uh, how we construct our indices in this presentation, both because of time constraints and uh, the stage of this research. So in terms of motivation, uh, there's a huge literature uh, that uh, shows that uh, uncertainty uh, about the economy can be a driver of business cycles uh, in and of itself. And there's also a lot of literature looking at uh, a document documenting a variety of channels to which uh, this can be driving business cycles. Second of all, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest uh, uh, in this topic in the policy space. So if you look at the recent cent central bank communications, uh, you will probably find quite a few uh, uh, side, you know, remarks about uncertainty. And uh, m many of these institutions, uh, certainly Bank of England, uh, engage in kind of systematic data collection on proxies for uncertainty. So lots of policy interest. But one, uh, one of the many open questions in this uh, evolving literature is how do we measure uncertainty? Specifically, uh, uh, you know, wh why would we use uh, text to measure uncertainty? Now, We've almost boxed ourselves in uh, in here from from the start because I mean a key value added of this project is to create a really long run series of economic uncertainty. Uh, text is pretty much the only thing we can rely on. So many other commonly used proxies for um, economic uncertainty, uh, such as uh, you know dispersion of economic forecasts. Uh, econometric estimates uh, based on uh, forecasts from a lot of series or implied volatility, those are all available for only a fairly short period. I should also add that uh, kind of text-based measures of uncertainty uh, are now fairly common in the macroeconomic literature. I mean, chief among these would be Baker, Bloom, and Davis, uh, 2016, uh, who create what's called an economic policy uncertainty index. Now, just to illustrate, this has, uh, I think, about 4,000 citations uh, on Google Scholar. The way these authors uh, create their uncertainty index is that they essentially count newspapers, paper articles where the word uncertainty uh, occurs. Uh, together with uh, a kind of economy and government related word, hence the policy uh, policy in that index. Now, we believe that there are a few shortcomings in this, but kind of, you know, a word count method uh, in itself, we see a lot of other authors using similar methods. So, this is really going to be our starting point. 
the way we approach this is to essentially create an index that captures the density of uh, uncertainty related words in the index. So it doesn't just capture the uh, number of articles in a set of newspapers. It actually uh, creates, uh, you know, captures the uh, sort of the uh, how forcefully uncertainty is emphasized in a uh, or emphasized in the text. To this end, we use uh, uh, sort of economic uncertainty related dictionary by Lovren and MacDonald, who published uh, an accompanying article uh, in the journal of finance in 2011. Now, this has been used quite a bit in the finance literature, a bit less so in the economics literature. Um, so, what I want to uh, what I want you to focus on is the uh, equation. So it, this basically does what I just said, so captures the density of given words. So we essentially for each uh, article, we take the number of times that a given uncertainty related word occurs in the text, uh, divided by the times that word occurs in all of our text, for example, the Economist uh, in a twenty-year on a twenty-year horizon. We then divide this with the number of words in article in a given article, and we basically just uh, sum up this measure for uh, all the uncertainty-related words in the Lovren and Macdonald dictionary, which kind of gives us the uncertainty score of a given article. Um, now, a scoring, uh, scoring uh, articles is the first step. Now, the second step is to ensure that the articles we are looking at actually re relate to the economy. Now this is a bit a bit trickier. Um, the way we approach this is we use what's called topic modeling. So a re we apply a really commonly used uh, way of doing this called uh, LDA from the uh, computational linguistics literature, which essentially captures uh, classifies documents as mixtures of topics. Uh, the key thing that it spits out is a set of words that are likely to occur with a high probability within a given topic. So you can think of it almost like a sort of clustering of words. Um, but this is an unsupervised learning method. So we do need to use human judgment later, but we can be fully transparent about uh, you know, which topics we pick. So I'm not going to have time to go into detail about this, but uh, you know these are our economy-related topics for 1950-2013. As you can see, our first topic it includes words such as union, shareholder, ex executive group, uh, etc. Um, so we basically identified 15 topics. Uh, that relate to the economy based on this method. Uh, today, I'm going to show you results based on the economist from 1950 to 2013. Now, we do have this data from the uh, mid 19th century, but there, there are lots of uh, kind of data cleaning issues we are dealing with. Uh, along with and we are still in the process of kind of adding the FT and uh, times to our data and we are considering adding a few more perhaps uh, the Guardian. Um, but uh, essentially this is the index based on uh, based on the method I just described. Uh, we believe that our method captures 
many of the uh, key events in the UK that uh, we would assume to be associated with economic uncertainty in the 1950s and the 60s we had the Suez crisis and recession uh, the French French vetoed uh, UK's membership in the EEC and uh, in the uh, following that in the 60s there was quite a bit of uh, monetary instability the sterling was eventually devalued uh, in the late 60s uh, following that the oil crisis uh, 90s recession uh, uh, the war in Iraq, uh, tech bubble, uh, and the global financial crisis. So th those are, we, we do see peaks in our uncertainty index uh, based on that. By the way, if any of you are wondering wh why these peaks, why not the, why, why not the more, uh, uh, why don't we basically observe a larger wave rather than mere peaks. Well, that's actually uh, documented in, uh, in the literature on uncertainty. I mean, this is how, uh, how most measures of uncertainty tend to work. So they occur in short peaks. Um, we can compare this to the very commonly used uh, measure by Bloom, Baker and Davis. They also have a measure for the UK. This is, uh, their measure is based on just a few newspapers though. Uh, so we wouldn't expect that to be perfect either. Um, I think a striking difference uh, between these two proxies is that uh, the uh, Blue Metal series doesn't capture key events in the uh, 50s or 60s, such as uh, well, the Suez crisis and recession, and also the monetary instability. We, are, we do start seeing more consistency between our series, however, around the uh, 90s and early 2000s. Uh, one thing I would uh, point out, however, is that uh, the Bloom et al. series, that only starts peaking really, you know, towards the end of the uh, crisis, you know, around 2008 or 9, uh, whereas ours uh, starts peaking already where in 2007 when, you know, kind of first news about uh, the subprime crisis started to be, uh, started to come out, for example, BNP Paribas uh, suspension of few funds and uh, as well as uh, Northern Rock, etc. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we also have an alternative indicator, as I just flagged. This is more consistent with the computational linguistics literature. So what we do here is we basically rely on a pre-tagged data set. So expert linguists have uh, essentially tagged a lot of text on uncertainty. Uh, whether it's on, conveys uncertainty or not. Uh, and uh, we then use this data set to train a model, uh, which, uh, well, we have a material in the appendix here showing that it performs quite well uh, in detecting uncertainty. Uh, and uh, once we have trained it, we apply it basically just to the text. And we see that, you know, it tends to capture many of the events we would expect it to uh, as well. This is for a shorter period, by the way. Uh, okay, so I don't have too much time here, but uh, just to conclude, I think really the key value added of this project, the key contribution is to create uh, long run indices for uncertainty in the UK and this kind of contributes to a, a set of literature that's uh, attracting a lot of interest, namely uncertainty and the macroeconomy. Our preliminary econometric results uh, would suggest that uh, 
you know, uh, uncertainty did affect macroeconomic macroeconomic conditions in the UK, but because our, we don't still have, we don't have our full uh, full data set yet, uh, we wouldn't put much weight on that. Uh, I think going forward, we are gonna I think sharpen the uh, topic modeling aspect. Uh, perhaps to go more into more detail about which uh, uncertainty related to you know specific topics, how that kind of relates to the economy, and we also we are also thinking of kind of adding uh, measuring sentiment based on newspapers. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.